All right, so here's a Bolex, and it's actually the last model Bolex, the H16 EL. EL's for electric motor, and you've got the five-pin DIN in here for power and sync, clap, and all other types of things. Otherwise, it's the same as all of the other Bolexes in terms of how the reflex part of it operates. And you might have heard me talk about this before. This is the piece not the little sensor behind there that's actually just a light meter, but this glass square. This is the piece that really separates the Bolex from a lot of other motion picture cameras in the way that it operates and some of the problems, but also opportunities it introduces. Now, if we swing it out, you can see it just swings out there. Right, you see the circular portion of this. That's actually the shutter and that's going to spin believe it's clockwise. There's a small opening for it to expose. This is the light meter and it flips out of the way. But this right here, this is a pellicle prism. So the way the Bolex gets an image to the eyepiece is instead of a mirror in front of this shutter spinning in synchronization with the pull-down claw to reflect the image back up into the eyepiece, what this has is a constant prism what this prism does is it sits in front of the film plane and it bounces about a third of the light right up here into the ground glass. Now this is a little expander magnifier uh, on top of the ground glass, but the ground glass is sitting just right here. Now there's a few reasons to go with this. One of the main ones is that it's miniature, it's silent, uh, and it offers flicker-free viewing. Since it's never moving out of the film path, it's never going to lose the image, so there won't be any flicker. Um, one of the issues that this introduces is that it cuts the amount of light that's hitting the film negative, but that can be compensated by changing the speed, the relative speed of the shutter, without too much noticeable difference in the motion cadence. But the other problem this introduces is it's it's actually a modification of the light path to the film plane. It's going to very slightly alter at certain focal lengths, wider ones only, the infinity position of the focal plane of the lens that it's aiming for. So the mount will remain the same. But basically the way the beams of light in the wider lenses uh, hit the negative needs to be adjusted a little bit. Now what this means practically is that any lens more or less above 25, regardless of the speed, will be fine to use. So any manufactured brand of lens that is quite long uh, should be able to work regardless of the speed. And we'll talk about why speed is important later. Now for example here, this is an old Canon rangefinder lens with a 50mm 1.8 and there's a C-mount adapter uh, on it right there. So because this is a 50, right, the focal lines are already traveling pretty far to hit the film negative. So when it's mounted here, even if it's open very wide, uh, and so the focus becomes more precise, because it's so long, the rays are already basically traveling uh, straight, in a sense, enough to hit and maintain the focus at wide apertures. So that's a good example. What a poor example would be something like this, which is a six millimeter lens. Now it's for a half inch sensor. Um, so there's, you know, a little bit of vignetting, barreling, whatever you might want to call it, um, borehole viewing, port key, that type of thing when it's on. But the important thing is it can reach infinity, and it does have a pretty good range of focus. It's in meters, but you can still see sort of, you know, what's going on right around there, right? There's about a foot. Now, when this is in 1.4, it's essentially only going to focus, if at all, very close, but more likely than not, not at all. So this has to be used at a 2 or a 2.8, being from manufacturer that it is without any type of correction for the film plane in it in order to work. Now, Bolex and many other manufacturers, I'll just open this up to give you some good look at while I'm talking. Bolex and many other manufacturers corrected this problem in their RX series of lenses. And the RX is like RX for the glasses, it's prescription. 
Um, it means that their faster lenses, which are also 1 to 1, 4, 1, 8, even 1.1 1 .1 with the 26 millimeter, their faster lenses will be able to function wide open or as open as they can be for any given scene because they have prescription correction in them. Now there's a series of zoom lenses and a series of primes from, again, several different manufacturers from different countries and different optic brands that'll compensate for this. But this is really, uh, in my opinion, one of the biggest drawbacks of using a Bolex, whether it's Super 16 or Normal 16. Now, quick note, this is Normal 16. It doesn't affect any of the operating principles that I've described, but just in case you're curious and you see anything that indicates that on the body or in the uh, physical options, you're right. But it does prevent you from being able to use, for example, super speed lenses, wide super speed lenses. Now, six millimeter, eight millimeter, I've noticed these are a lot more popular these days and you won't be able to use them. You'll be stuck using some of the Bolex brand, uh, 10 millimeter with the 5.5 Aspiron or something like that, um, which are perfectly fine lenses, but due to their age, their coatings, the technology, the sharpness, they might not perform in a way where you could seamlessly intercut it with some of the longer super speeds or ultra speeds and get the type of product that you're looking for. Now this is a Mark III or a Mark II. I believe this is a Mark III EL, and one of the ways you can tell the difference, you've got to press this safety latch, is the ASA. Uh, earlier models, I believe, don't go quite so high in the ASA, but you'll have to double check that. But if you're looking at an EL and curious when it's from or what revision it is, uh, this is one of the main ways. All right, so that's basically the issue with the Bolex, um, which is, you know, the prime camera um, of the choice for, you know, options this size. Um, I have an interesting thing I want to look at, and, you know, we'll see, we'll see why all this is relevant.